Another Seattle Kraken game last night, another Seattle Kraken loss. But more importantly, and more disappointingly, another chance where the Seattle Kraken likely could have performed better and didn't. Something's got to give. You are locked on Kraken. Your daily podcast on the Seattle Kraken. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. We are the Seattle Kraken. Hey, hey, what do you say, Seattle hockey fans? Welcome to another episode of Locked On Kraken, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where we bring you your favorite team, even if they're painfully your favorite, every single day. My name is Erica Eliala. I'm your host of Locked On Kraken. And uh, yeah, you know, um, this episode's probably going to sound a lot like yesterday's episode and the episode before that and the episode before that. And on and on and on. You get the gist. But also what is familiar maybe is that this episode is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get a $150 bonus bet package with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 if your bet wins. So visit FanDuel.com backslash locked on to get started. Where to start this podcast? Uh, Well, it was a 3-1 loss to New Jersey. I said yesterday I did not want to come on here and talk about a loss. And yet that's exactly what I'm doing. I'm talking about yet another Seattle Kraken loss. I don't even... I I, I genuinely am, am a little bit lost... Because I don't think we can pull moral victory from this. I don't think that we can necessarily have big picture perspective. Uh, We also potentially lost another player to injury when Brian Dumoulin went down. We also saw Vince Dunn get knocked around. It's frustrating, Kraken fans. I cannot be the only one frustrated by the the playing of the team in the, in the last handful of games you know and and again the thing that is a little bit disheartening is that the guys know that this isn't great either including that there are self-inflicted wounds i think i used that exact term yesterday self inflicted wounds. And I talked in the last few episodes about how, you know, we were talking about some of the trade rumors. It was for, in case you missed it on Saturday, I did an AMA and I was asked about, I mean, I wasn't specifically asked about trade rumors, but I was asked about what the Seattle Kraken might do. And so I addressed some trade rumors. And one of the trade rumors has been Will Borgen. And I don't know that there's really any weight to the trade rumor, but the thing that I mentioned is that for me, Will Borgen is a little bit inconsistent in ways that we don't need to be inconsistent. And Will himself, effectively, he corroborated that. He was not very verbose in his comments post-game, which I completely understand. So you're going to hear some of what he had to say. His answers were very short. I I, I don't have any issue with that. I'm not going to knock him for that. It's, it's tough to talk after a loss. I'm having difficulty talking, and it's several hours after the Seattle Kraken loss, and I didn't even play in the game. But I want you to hear what Will had to say, and you're also going to hear from Jamie Alexiak, regarding how difficult it is to play a game when both teams, but especially your team, is in the penalty box. Here's Will Borgen. And, and how, how difficult does it make it then as the game wears on to try to, uh, to, try to you know, match what the other guys are doing? 
Uh, it's fine. We're all in pretty good shape. It's just we're going to practice with each other every day, so we know how each other plays. What goes in? How disruptive is it when there are so many penalties in the game from both sides? Um, yeah, I mean, my penalty was stupid. Um, it was my fault. I was just angry and, yeah, a lot of penalties that we can't be doing. In what way did you guys get outworked? Uh, they all played us. What did you see from the Devils that made it hard for you guys to really get to your four-checking game and create the kind of offense that you know you can? Uh, just the third period, we decided that we need to start playing how we were supposed to play from the first two periods, and it's all good. We just didn't come prepared. I, 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 that's that's I, that's frustrating. It's frustrating. On the one hand, there's a piece of me as a podcaster who is feeling vindicated because my eye test is coming to fruition. I said it. Um, I haven't posted this yet. It'll probably be on tomorrow's episode. But I mentioned yesterday that I had a conversation with Ann Kimmel. And you're going to hear in that conversation with Ann Kimmel that I go there. I go about as close as I ever get to wondering questioning if we need to make a coaching change. And I give you a little bit of a spoiler alert. My answer hasn't changed from a few months ago. I think it's, it's, we're at a point where we have to at least consider that as an option. And I'm willing to have that conversation. But if you're asking me what my decision would be, if I were the decision maker, this, what we're seeing is not, <sighs> It's not that it's not a coaching problem, but it's not a coaching problem. What do I mean by that? Yeah, the guys are not playing the way they need to play. And they're now saying that. You're going to hear from Jamie Alexiak in a little bit. That's a that's a personnel problem. That's a that's a roster problem. That's a mindset problem. The reason it's also a coaching problem and this I hate to say it for Coach Hack's sake, but if you can't figure out how to motivate your team, then maybe you're not the right coach. I don't like that part of the business. I don't like that part of the game. But when are we going to, if we're not going to change personnel, if we're not going to make trades, if we're not going to move assets to make the personnel on the roster have a different mentality and mindset, then that means that the mindset and mentality has to be massaged, if you will. It has to be, it has to be um, harnessed. It has to be even challenged by the coaching staff. And if the coaching staff won't or can't, for whatever reason, tap in to the mentality of the team to get them motivated to play hard at the start of the game, then unfortunately, heavy is the head that wears the crown and costs to be the boss, whatever you want to say. And that's unfortunate that a, a head coach could lose a job because grown men who he's coaching don't show up until the third period. Is it all doom and gloom? Of course not. This is a this is hockey. We're talking about a sport. We're talking about and now. This is the livelihood of some people, and I understand that. Uh, but at the end of the day, this is a game. It's frustrating. There is a way out. Do the Seattle Kraken have the personnel? Whether it's on the roster or on the coaching staff or in the front office to turn things around? That's, that's the question. But this is manageable in the grand scheme of life. It just doesn't feel great right now. 3-1 loss to New Jersey Devils. You heard that um, Will Borgen didn't feel that uh, he, he, he called it a stupid penalty. I think there were a lot of stupid penalties. This, the, the Seattle Kraken 
gave the Devils five power play opportunities. They only converted on the one, but they had five power play opportunities. And um, that was their first goal of the game. <laughs> and it wasn't even it wasn't even Will's silly goal or silly foul uh, foul excuse me penalty it wasn't even Will's silly penalty it was something actually even more silly which talks to what I was I've been talking about the discipline the mentality and the mindset the Seattle Kraken went on their first penalty kill because they received a too many men on the ice penalty. Game 52. And that's what we're seeing. In the first period. For the Seattle Kraken. I told you I wanted to take you to Big Rig. Um... You know, he, it's, it's, um, Allison Lucan asking, but, um, you know, he, he mentions being on the penalty kill as well. And I want to set you up with this because there's something that was said on the broadcast that didn't sit right with me in the moment. And I said, we were going to talk about Maddie Beneers anyway, but here's Jamie Alexiak coming up next on Locked on Kraken. I want to talk about just something I didn't like on the broadcast. But first, here's Jamie. Um, we just got to make sure we grow up in this one. Jamie, what are the challenges defensively when they attack with the speed that they have? Um, just kind of doesn't really let you get set up systematically for the most part, you know, when, when they're flowing and moving. Um, a lot of speed, you kind of have to respect it, maybe push off the gap. I mean, there's still different things that go into it, but, um, you know, we, we could do a better job countering that as well, for sure. When you're trying to get your game flow going and there's penalties coming from both benches, is that disruptive or is that just something that you're used to dealing with? Yeah, totally. I mean, I think um, it disrupts the game flow. You know, your your scores can't really, don't generally play PK, so they're kind of on the bench and whatnot. And, um, you know, we, we got to be disciplined and, you know, myself that, especially. So that second period, you guys, what about that second period overall? Um, I mean, you know, like I said, I think execution the first wasn't probably where it was supposed to be. Um, I think responded pretty well, definitely in the third, you know, bits and pieces of the second there. Um, we just got to make sure we keep growing our game here. Today's episode of Locked on Kraken brought to you by our friends at FanDuel. Get buckets with your first bet on FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets if your first bet of $5 or more wins. That's $150 bu- bucks if your bet wins. Bet all of your favorite NBA players and teams with quick bets, live same-game parlays, exclusive props, and so much more. Just visit FanDuel.com backslash locked on and shoot your shot. FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the National Basketball Association. All right. Thanks as always for uh, tuning in and making Locked on Kraken a part of your daily destination. Want to remind you that Locked on has launched the first 24 7 streaming sports channel on YouTube, Locked on Sports Today. And you can get redirected right to Locked on Sports Today immediately after watching Locked on Kraken. It's an opportunity for you to tune in to our our national shows, uh, including. Of course, um, Locked on NHL, Locked on MLB, Locked on NFL. All of those shows you can find streaming on our 24-7 channel as part of the Locked on Podcast Network. And you can also listen to any of your favorite Locked on shows on YouTube, on your favorite audio platform, and of course, Sirius SXM. It is a game day. We're going to talk about the Islanders. Um but did you hear what Jamie Alexiak said at the end of that clip I played you um, at the end of the first segment? Saying that, you know, the offensive-minded guys on the roster 
are not usually on the PK. And so when the PK has to be humming a la five penalties, five power plays given to the opponent, you're not giving those guys any chance to get a rhythm within the game. Just keep that in mind. Because the thing on the broadcast that burnt my grits, as well as it was kind of swirling around Kraken Nation on the interwebs, is, you know, Maddie Beneers had that giveaway. And, uh, oh, you know, Eddie Olchek mentioned it. He, you know, he, he didn't play much after that. Uh, wonder if that's sending a message. That's a very specific style of thinking. And I understand that that style exists in sports. The reason I took exception is because to me, Coach Hack is not a play games kind of guy. Some coaches are. I've played for coaches that were. Dave doesn't give that. He doesn't give off that kind of energy. So when Eddie was saying it, and I saw it on social media, you know, this is sending a message. This is a punishment for Maddie Beneers for a takeaway. Come on. Come on. Come on. We have many, many bigger problems than Maddie Beneers and that takeaway. Was it? It was a good play by the Devils. Could May have stayed stronger on his stick? Should he had should he have had more awareness? Yes, to both. And there are so many more egregious things that we've seen happen to guys wearing a, to guys while wearing a Seattle Kraken uniform. And if we never are sending a message for those things, I can't imagine that in the middle of a game that the Seattle Kraken desperately need to win, that Dave and his coaching staff are going to take that moment to send a message. That just seemed a little ridiculous to me, if I can be honest. <laughs> Let's not start drama. We don't need any drama. We need solutions. Alienating a young centerman who's the centerman on your top line on some machismo BS? Not interested in it. And I don't think Dave is interested in it either because here's what he had to say after the game. What, what you guys were trying to do defensively? Our, uh, really, our, our uh, compete, uh, our execution uh, just took us out of this hockey game for the first 35 minutes. So that's, you know, that's really what led to, you know, led to most of our issues. I mean, right from, you know, the penalties that, uh, you know, that we ended up taking through the first and the second. I mean, the first one's off of, you know, a shot block that should have been to the net and then, you know, a poor track on it that, that lands us uh, in our in our first kill situation. We do a really good job killing that off, but give them a freebie on the, on the too many men on the ice jumping, you know, two guys jumping for one, um, you know, and that uh, that really snowballed at the start of the second period with, again, when, when you look at the, you know, the execution on some of the plays that ended up against us on our net, uh, you know, again, rolling into a couple of undisciplined penalties that are pure, out of pure frustration. So we, you know, that's the first 35 minutes of the hockey game. The PK and Joey did a hell of a job getting us through those two kills in the second. Um, and, and we found some competitiveness in the last 25 minutes. That's, you know, that's, uh, you know, that's the one bright spot you can take out of the hockey game. Now we'll, we'll see what we can turn that into tomorrow night. Matty uh, gave the puck away on that second goal, and then a shift or two later, he didn't. He sat for about 11 minutes. Was, was there anything wrong with him, and why why wasn't he taking? Well, you went. Well, you went through. No, there's nothing wrong with him. There, you, you went through uh, kills at that point in time. Um, it is what it is. So we're putting guys, you know, into situations. Uh, you know, killing penalties. Uh, you know, that, that's not part of what he does. So. 
uh, it was a you know what that the turnover came off of his tape and ultimately it's that's on that, that's his responsibility uh, but there's five guys on the ice that have to be in the right spots in order to move that puck and get it going and and um, you know look uh, look organized so that Anything no, there was no, way. no. If I, I've told you before, if I have a message, I'll talk to a player directly. If I have a message, I'll talk to a player directly. He's not going to have that conversation. He's not going to do that in the middle of a game. Listen, I, I've said my piece on how I feel about Eddie Olchek, mostly in his first year. His style, I understand it. It is entertaining at some points in time. To me, it's overkill. Um, just broad strokes overkill. Not not my flavor. Not my flavor, not my style. And things like that. Why? 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 Because I I again I don't ever get the read or the sense that that's something that Dave Haxtell would do. And I cover the team from a distance. So someone who in theory has more access to the team should know that that's not Dave's MO. And maybe you don't want to say that on a broadcast because it's categorically at least, at least according to what Dave is saying, and I don't see any reason why Dave would lie. That's not something he would do. So why are we going to create drama where we don't need drama? We don't need, we don't need drama about playing time, especially not when Brian Dumoulin goes down. We're just starting to get guys back. Reports that Pierre Edward Belmar no longer on injured reserve. I can't confirm whether we'll see him or not because the team, once again, did not have practice. And so we won't hear from Dave Haxtell until about an hour from the time I'm recording this. Uh, 5.30 Eastern. So I don't this will go up probably right around the time Dave is... Uh, set to speak to media. Uh, let's, I just want there to be no drama. I know maybe that doesn't make for entertaining television, but to me, what would be really entertaining television right now is for the Seattle Kraken to get back to the three F's. I talked about it. We gave no F's the other night. We gave a few F's in New Jersey, but not enough, not enough. And we weren't consistent. We weren't disciplined. So what is it going to take? What do we have to do? And can we do it against the Islanders? Let's talk about that coming up on this episode of Locked on Kraken. Today's episode, once again, brought to you by our friends at Sleeper. We know it's beyond the halfway point for the Seattle Kraken season, but the question still looms. Can the Seattle Kraken make the playoffs? Regardless of where the Kraken are in the current standings, I want to remind you that you could win big playing daily fantasy hockey on Sleeper, the official daily fantasy hockey app of Locked on NHL Network. Sleeper is our number one choice for fan daily fantasy sports, especially daily fantasy hockey. Because with Sleeper, you can win 100 times your cash in daily fantasy hockey contests. Now, you can choose what players you want, uh, what from what teams you can even, there's even like little combos sometimes that they have where you pick these two players will be over or under this projection. You're looking at everything. And, and this is not just in the NHL. You're also looking at these kinds of combos in the NFL, NBA, MLB, and more. And all you have to do to win is pick whether studs like Matty Beneers, Vince Dunn, Jared McCann will record more or less than their sleeper projections for things like goals, assists, saves, plus minus, and more on any given game. To win a 100x bet on sleeper, you need to correctly predict the outcome of eight player stats. You heard me right, Kraken fans. You can win 100 times your money playing Daily Fantasy with sleeper. Daily Fantasy Hockey with sleeper. So start paying attention and nail your picks so you can start winning big. 
Use promo code locked on NHL and you'll get up to a $100 match on your first deposit. Terms and conditions apply. That's code locked on NHL. See Sleepers terms of use for details and locational availability. And bon chance. Good luck. All right, Seattle hockey fans, it's a game day. Uh, you know, so. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're going to turn the page again. Hopefully, we have a chance to turn the page. And we'll have a chance to do that in game number 53 against the Islanders. A few quick stats and facts for you to know. The Islanders are 22, 18, and 12. 56 points on the season to our 52. We are 21, 21, and 10. We are 10, 12, and 6 on the road. The Islanders are 13, 7, and 7 at home. In our last 10 games, woof, 2, 7, and 1. Well, the Islanders are 3, 5, and 2. So I guess hope springs eternal, Kraken fans. This might be one, at least just looking at the trends, where we can get something going. Our power play at a 20.8% clip to the 22.5% clip the Islanders are taking into today's game. Our penalty kill is better, 78.8% to 71.3% as of yesterday, February 12th. Um, yeah, I I want to see us get a win. I, I mean, I really don't have much analysis to say other than that. But, you know, I like to look at when we need to maybe be concerned uh, within the game, that is. Because we were all, I, I don't know about you. I don't want to speak for you. I'm already concerned about the Seattle Kraken. I've said that this stretch of home games, including the one against San Jose, we're going to be the test on whether we need to be buyers, whether we need to be sellers. How immediate is the problem? How big is the problem? I know that I need to, you know, get through the rest of this road trip. It's looking pretty bleak right now, but here we go. Scoring first, the Islanders are 16-3-9. and nine. We are 14-6-4. and four. When the opponent scores first, neither team does very well coming from behind. We are 7-15-6. and six. The Islanders are 6-15-3. and three. When leading after the first, both teams, we're like a mirror image of each other. We're 14, 5, and 1 when leading after one. They are 12, 0, and 4 when leading after the first period. Leading after the second period, both teams 17 wins on the season. There's a total of, uh, you know, four, four losses overtime for, for the Seattle Kraken. Uh, and, Six losses altogether for the Islanders. Um, neither team does very well when trailing after two. We are 118 and three. Oof. Not the Warriors, not the comeback kids at all. The Islanders are 214. Haha, that's tomorrow's date. 214 and two. So if we can make the Islanders play like us while us also not playing like us, then we can win the game. Ha <laughs> ha. I mean, fun, fast, and forechecking. We need to give all of the Fs. You heard from Will. You heard from Jamie. Jared McCann said it the other night. The team is able to get an uptick in their pro productivity when they have kind of like a meeting of the minds. Uh, some people call it a come to JC moment in the locker room. Excuse me. And they're giving each other tough love. Maybe since we didn't have any morning skate to speak of. They are giving each other the tough love. Maybe have a players only meeting, shut the door to the to the coaches, let them do their own scheming and just have hash it out, boys. Because there's something amok. Amok, amok, amok. There is something amok in Kraken Nation. 
Not really a Kraken Nation on the Kraken roster. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't look good even from a distance. There's um, And it's not the break. It's not the break. So what's going on? You know, sometimes team dynamics are important. I'm not saying this is the case. I'm not saying that there's any drama. I don't know of any drama to speak of. But even if there's not any blatant, overt drama, sometimes you just have to get back to the basics. Get back to committing yourselves to one another. I feel like I'm talking about a relationship right now, but if I am. They're in relationship with each other. They're teammates. And it's not because someone wants to be on another team. It's not because someone's mad that someone else went to Cabo and someone someone else was in San Diego. And then, you know, it, it's not your fault, but you, you were supposed to come to my vacation and then you went to the All-Star game. I'm not saying, I'm being, of course, a little silly here. I'm not saying that that's happening. That's not always how communication breaks down. Sometimes you get complacent. Sometimes you get too comfortable. I've been listening to the audio book of Asia Wilson's book, and she talks about before the Aces won their first championship in 2022. All-star break, not playing well. And all-star break, you go to the all-star game, and then you want to kind of lay low a little bit, right? Go to the parties. Hang out with your people from other teams. And she said that Becky Hammond called everyone on the phone and said, you need to be, because they were getting ready, I'm assuming they were getting ready to play New York. You need to be at the team hotel first thing in the morning, coming right off the all-star break. So sorry to your parties, get here. And for hours, they sat in a room and hashed it out. She, Becky Hammond, their head coach, implemented this thing, which we already have in hockey, in playoff hockey. But she basically, after telling them about themselves, said this, I don't have one. So imagine this is a, a faux brick, right? Like a brick, you know, like a brick you put on a to build a building. She said, this is how we're going to get through the season. One of these at a time. Brick by brick. And so a la what we see in the playoffs, right? Every win that the Aces got, they would get a brick. And it got to the point where the team started getting excited about the bricks, right? They wanted the brick. They would be so excited to get back to the locker room so that they could put the brick up, right? And start to build their house. I don't know. I don't know if Dave can... Find the same link that Becky Hammond had, but we need something. We need some kind of spiel, some kind of shtick, some kind of something to reset everyone. Get us invigorated for the fight that is ahead. Because it's a fight now, boys. The fight started 52 games ago. But in the context of a long haul of a season... Right now, we have to get after it. And we haven't been. So who's going to lay the first brick? Who's going to lay the first brick? Start at zeros. Season starts now. Who's going to do it? We need the true leaders to step up right now. Everly has been that for us. McCann, Yanni Gord, I thought, did some fantastic things, small things that show me he's fighting. He's out there fighting. We're going to talk about Maddie Beneers and the defensive analysis that's come out. Yeah, he made a bad play. But I want to get into the analytics. Joey Decord has been, has been trying to lay down bricks for this team for a really long time. And we probably would have given up more than three goals if it hadn't been for him fighting 
to try and earn one of these, you know, metaphoric. Now this is it's just my this is my cell phone. It's just my cell phone. But 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 it, it's a brick. No, it's not. It's not just my cell phone. It is a brick. It is a brick. We're gonna lay a new foundation for this season for the Seattle Kraken. We have to. So I don't know what was said or what was done in lieu of morning skate, but I would love it. Someone who loves leadership development theory, I would love it if we found our version of Becky Hammond and the Las Vegas Aces brick. And maybe we can start doing that here on Locked on Kraken. I am no way affiliated with the Seattle Kraken other than I follow them for this podcast. But if the energy, if the momentum, if we can start giving that to some of the team and start giving that to each other, then let's do it. Because we might not make the playoffs. That's just the reality. And you know what? That is its own form of disappointment coming off of last year. But it's tolerable. And acceptable. And it's a part of the game. If you do your best and you don't make it. But it's when you leave something on the table. Those are the ones that hurt. Those are the ones that disappoint. And right now, it feels like the Seattle Kraken are not even close to emptying the tank. I think we don't even know what side of the car the tank is on. We're not looking at the dashboard for that little arrow. Did you know that? It took me way too long into adulthood to realize you just look at the arrow and that's that's where the tank is. Anyway, we don't even know how to fill up the tank. All right? We roll into the gas station. We've got the card ready to swipe. We are ready. And and then we're, I don't, I don't oh, I got to go this way. I got to go there. Oh, okay. Look, can I pull it across? Or oh, should I put that back down? And should I get out the car and turn it around? That's what it feels like. Chaos. Absent-minded. Just take a look at the dashboard. Take a breath. You've got money on your card. You're at the gas station. Just set the car up in the right place and put the gas in the tank and drive on. That's all. That's all we got to do. Of course, it's not that simple. But what if it could be? What if we made it that simple? So uh, I don't know who's responsible for such things, but if anyone wants to invite me to do a motivational speech for the Seattle Kraken, I'm happy to do so. Hey, listen, like I said, we're here. We have fun. We build a community around the Seattle Kraken, but I don't want this to get you down too much. It's a game. It's going to be painful sometimes. It's going to be glorious other times. Right now is a little bit of a struggle. But don't forget that this is a game. So in life, whatever you're going through, be kind to yourself. Be kind to each other. And we're going to talk real talk here. I'm a little nervous, but I will always hold fast. I will always stay true. And tonight, because it's a game day, we say loud and proud, let's go Kraken. And we'll see what happens. Games at UBS Arena in Elmsford, New York. We're taking on the New York Islanders, who need a little bit of a jump start themselves. What is it going to be, boys? I'm assuming we're going to see Philip Grubauer in net since we are on a back-to-back. And if not, then oh, holy cannoli, I got a whole new rant for you tomorrow. Speaking of tomorrow, the episode will be a little bit early. I've been, I told you yesterday, I'm trying to hit the four to 6 PM mark. I'm either going to release the Kraken episode early, or what I'll probably do is still schedule it around this time, but around this time in real time, 
I will be getting ready to take on, or not to take on, I will not be hitting the ice. I will be getting ready to cover the Kansas City Mavericks as they uh, visit the Tulsa Oilers. So uh, happy Valentine's Day. I will have some fresh quotes, especially for my Locked on Kraken insiders. And that's coming up on the next episode. Until then, enjoy the game. Enjoy the night. Enjoy your week. This is a week where we uh, extend love. At least, you know, that's what the hallmarks of the world want us to do. But I hope that you feel that love every time you listen to Locked on Kraken. Extra special love for you and yours tomorrow. I'll catch you on the next episode. Peace out, everybody.